Hi everyone, welcome to Hashtag Coffee with Kai here on Hello Doctor Philippines. My name is Kai Magsano. I am the Editor-in-Chief of Hello Doctor PH. And with me today, so this is the fourth and the last, but certainly not the least, in our series of interviews with the Binibini Pilipinas 2021 Queens. So we have today with us no other than Binibini 10, Maureen Montaigne. She is our new Binibini Pilipinas Globe. Hi, Maureen. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Well, of course, because uh, beauty queens are, are a different breed of influencers for Filipinos. And I thought if we could feature you and get to know you better, then people will have another role model that they can look up to, right? Especially... Aww. It like you okay we're gonna, we're gonna talk about your advocacy later pero Maureen for for the sake of those who weren't able to follow your Binibining Pilipinas journey I mean the year is pretty weird no we're doing things differently so just in case uh for those who don't know you yet can you please uh tell us more about our new Binibining Pilipinas globe so hello, my name is Maureen Montang. I'm 28 years old and I represented Padre Garcia Batangas in the last edition of Beanie Beanie Filipinas. I grew up in the States in Arizona, but I moved here in 2017 for work and I've been doing commercial modeling and hosting here since 2017. Okay, so that's great. Why did you decide to join uh, the beauty pageant, Maureen? I wanted to push myself to keep growing. I've competed before in the States and then I actually competed here in a national fitness competition for Century Tuna Superbots. And pageantry in the Philippines is just so elevated. It's, it's really a sport here and you know, I, over the years, I've just grown such a fond admiration for Bini Bini Filipinas. And it's medyo interesting with pageants, you have age limits. So I actually turned 28 the day before coronation. So this was kind of like my last hurrah in pageantry. So I thought, why not end my pageant journey with Bini Bini Filipinas? Because it really is the gold standard of pageantry. Yeah, that's true. And I guess depending on how you utilize your year in the crowd wearing this title, right? And then hopefully, of course, you win your international pageant in November. But depending on how you you utilize your influence now in your voice, this could just be the start of many great things, right? For you. Yeah. So what was your Binibining Filipinas journey like? How do you compare a pageant versus a fitness competition, for example? So with a fitness competition, you're really just focused on your body and just showing up and looking good. With a pageant, there are so many different sides to it. Not only do you have to be beautiful, but you also have to be an excellent speaker. You have to be up to date on current events. You have to have a great walk. You need to be warm. You need to be likable by your audience. So it's much more competitive for a beauty pageant because everybody has a different standard of beauty. So it's... It's a challenge, but it's a challenge that I'm always up for because with the crown comes such a wonderful platform, but I love it. It's It can be hard, especially with the pandemic. Our pageant ended up being, I think, one year and seven months. Yeah. So it was so long, but it was a labor of love. Yeah. So it's been more than two weeks since you won your title. How has it been for you? It's been wonderful. It's honestly, so before, when we originally started, I was 26 years old and I was eligible for all of the crowns. And then come this coronation, you know, two birthdays have passed. I was medio sad, but because I aged out of two of the crowns. But I figured I sacrificed so much. I'm going to stick through it. And even for my birthday, I wished for a crown. So when I got it, it was like, even though if you look at my photo, my crowning photos, I'm so happy because with the pandemic, I didn't know if I'd be able to make it to coronation. Cause we also, we started with 40 girls and then because of life and financial issues and jobs, we 
ended up having 34 girls compete. So, you know, it wasn't easy for everyone, but I was just happy. And so I made sure to tell myself, no matter what happens, you're going to enjoy every moment. And ever since, you know, a crown was placed on my head, I've loved every moment, been so thankful. Beauty Beating's been wonderful. And I really, really love the girls. And I mean it. My, our batch is so, so sweet. Yeah, well, based on my 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 earlier interviews with Hannah, with Samantha, with Cindy, you know, everyone's been pretty balanced, very impressive. And when you ask them about mental health, everyone says, you know, the support system they got from each other in the competition, which was quite unexpected, okay, for me. I wasn't expecting that, all right? But speaking of uh, mental health, we're going to talk about that later. Let's first talk about your advocacy. So on the Binibining Filipinas website, when people look up, look you up, they see they'll find that your advocacy is on HIV and AIDS awareness. Why did you choose that? I think it's a relevant issue in our country. And it was interesting because before I felt like there were a lot of eyes on the subject. However, now with the pandemic, everyone's focused on COVID. It's almost as if other diseases and ailments have completely disappeared. Well, at least from our radar. But of course we know they're still there. So for me, it felt like something that I could, you know, help break the stigma, raise awareness, encourage testing. I felt like it was something I could make a difference with. So that's why I decided to choose HIV and AIDS awareness. Well, that's true. Last. Um... June when we had our Facebook Live for Pride Month and then we even had um, Mr. Renaud Mayor of uh, UNDP in Thailand. He did say, right, we have a pandemic but AIDS in the country, in the Philippines, is still an epidemic. It's still a yes. big problem, right? So good to have someone like you, um, Maureen, to keep, you know, shining a light on that particular disease that we can help people manage and raise um, awareness about. Okay. Um, okay, this wouldn't be a health and wellness interview if we don't go into the into the fis- fitness aspects, right? I mean, who else but aside from our athletes competing in the Olympics, or I think they're, they've gone home today, but who else do can we look up to for fitness tips and advice but our beauty queens because... <laughs> We know it's a lot of hard work also, right? It's not it's not easy. People think you make it look easy, but we know a lot of hard work goes into it. So Maureen, tell us about your fitness routine. What is your exercise or workout routine? And what do you do when, you know, like any human being, you don't feel like it? <laughs> Days that you're not really motivated to exercise. Yes, Bob. So like everyone else the closure of gyms and you know working from home staying at home has been so hard to manage fitness with but it's been it's been interesting um so i actually was in shargao for the majority of the pandemic for the first six months so um towards the end we were allowed to get outside but the best fitness activity you can ever do is surf and it's really full body because you're paddling the whole time. So it's cardio, it's balance. I'm also huge into yoga. And then I recently got into boxing and boxing makes you feel good. And I don't know, it, it, it's almost building my confidence too, because I feel very coordinated and I, I feel like many Pacquiao, I can defend myself, <laughs> but I, I really don't like just going to the gym. I prefer activities. So that's one thing I'm really hoping we can get back to is yoga at the park. Um, for now, socially distanced yoga. But uh, I really look for activities. So whether it's to go running, I live here in BGC and there's a, a beautiful running trap. So doing that, just getting outdoors. And yeah, I always love doing it exercising with a friend okay that's good that's good advice so activities if 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 it permits right if, if our you know situation permits and then doing it with a friend a buddy okay, that's good those are good tips but how about how about your diet uh, maureen because they say fitness is 
not not so much the exercise but also what you put in your body right because you could be working yeah. really hard but eating pizza every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah how do you how do you do it what do you eat what is your way of eating mm -hmm. well they always say abs are made in the kitchen it really does matter what you eat so yeah. for me i always my major rule is try to eat as much unprocessed food as possible. So if it's natural, then it's great. I don't really, I don't calorie count. I don't completely cut myself off from things, but like a, for breakfast, I'll have rolled oats with almond milk and then tons of fruit. So berries, bananas. For lunch, I'll have chicken breast and zucchini and maybe some quinoa. So I eat super healthy. But because I'm eating healthy, I don't have to limit my portions. And I've just noticed through my own trial and error that I don't process dairy. It makes me feel sluggish, even though I love cheese. <laughs> but I try to limit my dairy and then red meat. I actually really want to have a blood test done mm -hmm. and to see like my food intolerance test. Actually, I think for Christmas, I want to treat myself to one of those tests. But I've really just started listening to my body about, because as a model, although I am thin, sometimes I bloat like crazy. And especially as a woman, like nobody wants to feel bloated. So I've just been listening to my body and uh, yeah, I try not to indulge. I think portion control is my biggest tip is you can have your, your favorite foods, just don't overdo it. Mm, okay, all right. Um, very relatable, very realistic, thank you. <laughs> easy to talk, <laughs> right for for mere mortals like us how about your hair and skincare routine maureen because uh you know I'm, I'm guessing how stressful it could be for you your schedule you know packed with guestings and all of that but you know at, at the same time you, you, your skin is also you know your biggest asset that's, that's what the people see you know? so how do you take care of your skin and your hair Yes, I really do believe that beautiful skin can give you beautiful makeup and a beautiful look. So for me, I, I try to put the least amount of products as possible. Even when I apply makeup, I try not really to put it where we put the mask because I'm not trying to get masked me and it's so hard now. So I really just, people really look at your eyes. So try to focus my makeup up here, but yeah, I clean my face every day. If I don't need to wear makeup, then I don't. I'm a big advocate on wearing sunblock because I naturally have uh, freckles, but I don't want to get additional sun damage because while I was in Chargao, I was so brown, so brown tan. I look morena and I loved it, but I got so many new freckles and I've my derma was like, Maureen, those aren't just freckles, that's sun damage. So take very, very good of your, care of your skin. But I also... Yeah, I think just eating healthy. I probably have a smoothie every other day. Um, I do take vitamin C as well. And then for hair, I just try to be as easy on it as possible. Because I know it gets a lot of abuse. Um, even when I'm not doing pageantry, I'm a full-time model. So mm -hmm. I just try to not style it or put it in a bun when I'm not working. Okay. That's nice. Really just uh, being natural. If you can, right? I mean, if you don't have to wear yeah. makeup, wear makeup. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, the most important part, I think, about being uh, of health that I think a beauty queen like you manages is her mental health, right? More than anything, you know, what really keeps you up, you know, what gets you out of bed is your mental strength. Because, well, I am not, I don't know what are the things that are, uh, that you are also taking care of, you know, apart from being uh, our beauty queen, one of our new Binibini Filipinas queens. But I can only imagine how it must have been also difficult during the pageant. You know, like you said, it was a very long pageant. Yes. So you, how did you take care of your mental health then? And how are you doing it every day? During the pandemic, I really had to disconnect from social media. I actually had two instances where I thought I don't think I'll be able to continue. One was because of work and then I was actually offered an international title during the pandemic as well 
And I declined it, of course, because I knew in my heart I wanted Beanie Beating Filipinas. So I said no. And then I was actually canceled online. The org that offered really changed their tune and it, it was so hard on me mentally. And it's funny because everybody's like, oh yeah, I remember that, huh? But like for me, that was such a hard time in my life because I really felt like such a villain for saying no. But at the end of the day, all you can, you know, as beauty pageant queens, we do have to empower ourselves and not just talk about women empowerment, but actually practice it, which means choosing the decisions that are best for yourself. So for me, I had to disconnect and I really volunteered. We started a community kitchen in Shargao and that was kind of my, my main focus during that time. Um, because it also, it's fulfilling for you when you're helping other people. But I really just have to disconnect. And um, I like to take a lot of the harsh criticism as a joke. To say, if you don't, sometimes if you take it too seriously, you'll cry. So of course you have to laugh and always respond to the haters love. I think it shocks them sometimes, but it can really turn your haters into your fans when you handle it the proper way with like love, Right? But Absolutely. All, all you did was say no. So what's wrong with saying no? Right? At the end of the day, yeah. you wanted to compete in a different pageant. That was a risk in itself, which was very brave of you to choose. So so yeah. Well well great to be talking to you now. Someone who's <laughs> through that. I'm sure that's uh that's great insight. Um yeah, social media is a double edged sword. And I do hope, Maureen, moving forward, that the social media will work in your favor in terms of, you know, your advocacy and then your your competition in November. So before we end our interview, please tell the viewers of our, our interview how and where they can follow your journey to the, to the crown towards your competition in November. Well, thank you again, Ms. Kai, for having me. And thank you to all our viewers at Hello Doctor. Thank you so much. Um, you can find me at Maureen Montang on all social media. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and then on TikTok, my username is at Malrain. But please follow and support my journey. I leave third week of October. Dates are still being finalized, but please raise your flag and I hope to bring home the second ever Miss Globe crown back home to the Philippines. Okay. Thank you so much, Maureen, for doing this for the country. Uh, yeah. yeah, pleasure. <laughs> of course, we'll be rooting for you, okay? So Thank there you go, that's Miss Maureen Montaigne, our Pinibining Filipinas Globe for this year. Off to get the second, uh, Miss Globe Crown for the country. Thank you again for joining our interview here in Hello Dr. PH. I hope you learned a lot of valuable tips from Maureen on fitness, on diet, and on mental health. Until our next interview, stay dry and be well.